Hello and welcome to the Thursday, August 25th, 2022 edition of the Sands Internet Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Brad is on a roll with his second malware analysis diary in as many weeks. This time, Brad grabbed a Monster Libra sample. Now, Monster Libra is also known as TA551 or Shadak. And again, as so often, the malware starts out with a Word document and, of course, tricks the user into enabling macros. Yet another reason why it's so important that Microsoft is clamping down on these macros. This initial macro downloads a DLL file that then installs iced ID, which in the end pulls either dark VNC or Cobalt Strike. That's a very typical combination that we have seen in the past. Sometimes in the past we have seen, for example, dark VNC being installed more on sort of standalone systems and then Cobalt Strike more on Active Directory controlled systems. Packet captures, indicators of compromise and more are as usually included in Brad's write-up. And talking about malware and traffic analysis, security company Uptix uh, has uh, published an analysis showing how what they think is crypto miners, even though they haven't really observed the crypto miner part here yet, but malware taking advantage of the Tox peer-to-peer protocol for command control. So not Tor with R, instead Tox with an X in the end. And Tox is well well suited for uh, this kind of command control. It's a serverless protocol. We have seen sort of these uh, peer-to-peer protocols uh, pop up from time to time. Machines are only talking to each other. There's no sort of central server or infrastructure that uh, could be taken down. The traffic is encrypted, taking advantage of the network and cryptography library or short NACL or actually pronounced SALT to implement the TOX protocol. They're actually using a reference implementation, the C TOX core library. And that's really the advantage of using a protocol like TOX. Not, it's not just peer-to-peer an attacker and sometimes it happens they sort of develop their own peer-to-peer protocols but well it's hard to do it correctly and if you have a nice library like this to use then why not just use it so far they haven't really seen the crypto coin miner part uh, as i mentioned but an attacker could execute after command via the peer-to-peer network other than that uh, the malware behaves like any other linux malware it is a uh, elf binary so only on linux at this point and it drops out of scripts into var temp it runs commands like who am i machine id also kills uh, competing crypto miners which is another reason why this is likely a crypto miner so become a little bit familiar with talks and figure out sort of how to spot that protocol on your network and with that let's talk about a couple patches and updates from today first of all vmware released a knowledge base article stating that its security product carbon black may cause blue screens and reboots on some windows systems This was apparently caused by a bad rule set that was released on Tuesday. If you have a system that's affected, that basically just is sort of caught in a reboot loop or a blue screen, what you need to do is you first need to turn off carbon black in via the cloud console, so turn it into bypass mode. That'll allow the system uh, to boot again and then it will download updated rules. So after it has done that, uh, then of course the system should be stable again, even if you do reactivate Carbon Black, and yeah, uh, definitely don't forget to take it out of uh, bypass mode. If this doesn't work, then, well, it takes some extra step. You'll actually have to go into a safe mode and apply additional fixes at that point. Uh, Just follow the instructions in uh, Carbon Black's or VMware's uh, knowledge base article. GitLab fixed a critical security issue. Uh, This problem only affects uh, their on-premise product. The cloud version is either not affected or, well, uh, they already mitigated the issue because, well, that's sort of the software as a service where 
GitLab is responsible for maintaining uh, the software. The update fixes a remote command execution via the GitLab import. When I saw this first, I figured, hey, GitLab import doesn't really sound anything that uh, you would use without authentication. Well, um, I was wrong. It doesn't require any authentication. The only thing the attacker needs is access uh, to the API endpoint. And as a workaround, you can just disable the GitLab import. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.